CataractCoach.com. Complete cataract case. They go flip and chop in pseudo exfoliation. We'll show you the whole case start to finish. This is an elderly lady, 87 years old, and she's got pseudo exfoliation. This is the maximum dilation we could achieve preoperatively, even with 10% phenylephrine, cyclopentylate, tropicamide, everything. We're putting in some anesthetic, some lidocaine, preservative free. That sometimes helps dilate the pupil a little bit more. You could put an epinephrine inside the eye or phenylephrine as well. I think we're pretty good. We'll use our dispersive viscoelastic to do the Osher-style viscomedriasis, try to expand that pupil. Now, the viscomedriasis is a temporary thing. As we remove some of the viscoelastic from the eye, the pupil come down. But while we do the caps rexus, it'll be good. Making our incision here on the steep axis. We're also going to be placing a toric lens on this same steep axis. Um, going in for the caps rexus. Now, watch carefully. Look at the capsule. Does it wrinkle? Uh, not too bad. Well, actually pretty good. So we'll poke in, start our capsule rexus here. If the capsule wrinkles as you try to poke into it, that's a sign of weak zonular support. Ideally, you want the zonules to have such good support that the anterior capsule is tight, like the head of a drum, very taut. So we're making our rexus at least five millimeters. Let's adjust the light here so we can see a little bit better. We want a five millimeter or five and a half millimeter caps rexus. Sometimes these pseudo exfoliation patients are more prone to caps or phimosis. So complete that, complete that rexus with a good generous size um, opening and that's pretty good. Now here's the trick to prolapse nucleus. Balance on solution, nice and easy. The key is slow and steady. There's the first wave, don't stop. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. There it is. Now it's pulled partly out of the bag, using the cannula now to lift it up even a little bit more. Now we did lose viscoelastic, so let's recoat the cornel endothelium with the dispersive viscoelastic there behind the nucleus and in front of it. Let's protect that cornea. There's an elderly lady, and her endothelial cell count is not the highest. At 87, it's pretty much uh, on the downslope. Faco probe going in the eye. Now the key is to place the chopper opposite the phaco probe. So get it across the other side of the nucleus and get it deep, deep, deep down in there. And now buzz in, bring them together, split the nucleus. There's the split. Don't worry if you don't, pro, uh, don't propagate the split all the way through. That's okay. We're just going to keep chopping. So we'll buzz in some of the nucleus, try to debulk it here, whatever is there at that iris plane. And then we'll put the chopper around and break it up into even smaller pieces. So you want to just keep on chopping it. There's the chopper going behind, and we can break off a little piece here, and we can take out the little pieces and even do more chopping. And so far, so good. We're using the phaco power modulations, trying to use a high pulse mode here, about 60 pulses a second, also keeping the duty cycle relatively low, keeping that duty cycle of 50% or even slightly less. You can also use on these machines, they have settings that when they sense occlusion, then they can ramp up the power. And that helps you save the higher amount of power for when the nuclear piece is already blocking the tip. So we'll get these last few pieces out. The chopper now can just be protective and uh, keep that posterior capsule at bay or use the chopper to push these little nuclear pieces around. We can just change that fluidic current though and get most of those out of the eye very easily. That looks pretty good. There's that last piece, a little bit of uh, energy going into it to emulsify it. And looking good, time for some cortex removal. Now, nucleus is out, that went beautifully. For the cortex removal, be careful of the zonular support. So if you inadvertently grab the capsule while you're doing this and you pull on it, you can actually damage zonular support even more. So watch where you're aspirating, make sure it's only the cortex, and also look at the capsular rexus edge. Make sure it's not moving. And then let's clean it up. We want to clean it up as much as we can. Get off those lens epithelial cells, which may predispose the eye to more phimosis. But also, this is delicate. She's 87. These tissues are weak. Let's be very cautious as well. So there's a balance. We'll do some polishing here, clean it up as best we can. There's the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim being cleaned up. But if you have a little bit of stuff left over, listen, don't sweat it. You want uh, to emphasize that difference, the delta between the before and after. And for her, treating the hyperopia and the astigmatism and the cataract, 
really is going to make a world of difference. Filling up our capsule bag there are the cohesive viscoelastic. You can see the marks on the cornea. Those are the marks on the steep axis. We're going to line up the torque lens with those marks. Here comes that lens. We'll deliver that into the capsule bag. Monofocal lens here. Now, did you need to put a CTR? Listen, the zonules look great during this case. There's no need to add extra bulk to the capsule bag. It's not going to make a difference in her case. And she will do just fine. So let's get that lens in the capsule bag. We'll rotate it around. Since the toric lens, we're going to place it a little bit before we want it, like a clock hour or two before the correct axis. And then we'll rotate the lens clockwise to achieve that. So let's get all the viscoelastic out. Very important on a toric lens. Get behind that optic. Vacuum out all the viscoelastic. You do not want any viscoelastic between the optic and the poster capsule. This optic wants to touch the poster capsule directly, and it's slightly tacky, so it'll adhere in place. And that's going to be great for long-term stability of this toric lens. You want this lens to heal into position and not uh, rotate. If you leave this elastic, that's lubrication for, ro for malrotation. So it's slightly advanced in here using that chopper. The, the irrigation is on position one for the right hand for the probe. The chopper on the left hand is rotating the lens. And all we got to do now is line up those toric marks of the IOL optic, there they are, with the marks in the cornea, and also line up the two Purkinje images to avoid any parallax. Let's seal up that incision. This is looking darn good. Now, we have the red reflex really enhanced here. You can see some of the little vitreous opacities that are present. Don't worry about those. This is typical. We're going to clean out the angle of the eye, angle sweep there, making sure there's no retained viscoelastic. We don't want a pressure spike in the post-op period. And let's seal up the incisions. And we can do any final adjustments we need to of the lens rotation to get it just where we want it. And I'm happy to say the patient had a beautiful result. So thanks for watching this case, and I trust that you'll be able to do a case just as beautiful.